Hello and welcome, welcome to Assembly TV studio. My name is Riina Nieminen and I will be hosting Fireside Chat today. Fireside Chat is a new program on Assembly TV and we are going to interview some of the seminar speakers, vloggers and streamers. Now here with me I have Tuukka Takala. Welcome. Thank you, it's nice to be here. Tuukka, you are a doctoral candidate in Aalto University and you are working full-time with augmented re and virtual reality. How did you get interested in uh, augmented and virtual reality? Well, I started, I think in the 90s, I tried one of the first consumer VR headsets and okay. they weren't very good, but it gave me a lasting image. And also, I've, I've taken a lot of influence from popular culture, uh, like the movie Law and Over Man, Ghost in the Shell, and of course Matrix. Uh, yeah, Matrix is a big influence, or really giving you some possibilities of virtual reality. I even like the sequels of Matrix. Okay. And did you know uh, in the 90s that you want to work with this? Well, not really. Um, I'm actually not 100% sure how I got. I was always interested in computer graphics and, and I was uh, studying computer science. So I knew that I wanted to work with something something that's related to computer graphics. And well, of course, computer graphics are widely employed in, mm. in the virtual and augmented reality. Mm. And uh, what makes it interesting to you? What is the thing for you in VR? Well, there's so much potential there, you know, all these virtual worlds and like altering your avatar, your, your self-representation and so forth. And uh, fortunately right now, virtual reality has a lot of hype around it. It's a very, I think there's a lot of potential business-wise and so forth mm. as well. And you have been working with this uh, past 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the biggest achievements so far? Well, my, yeah, I think the biggest achievement is, is my doctoral thesis that I've submitted under review. Um, there's several parts of that work that I'm, I'm kind of proud of. First of is, is the Ruiz Toolkit that is for Unity platform. It's basically a, a software toolkit for so that hobbyists could easily develop VR applications. Okay, wow. And there's it's been used by my students students uh, in five different five different courses in all the university and also some other people around the world. So I'm I'm happy to have been able to create something that at least some people use. Uh, another part is is really my uh, like research work and I've been able to find some details um, like what are the most ho the hardest challenges in virtual reality development so I'm kind of proud to be able to quantitatively say that these and these things are are the hardest issues in such development okay and can you mention one of those or yeah some I of can them? <laughs> so uh, this is based on uh, kind of questionnaire data from virtual reality developers themselves mm. and and the two most like pressing issues that they rated as most severe were um, the fact that they don't always have access to virtual reality equipment. Mm. This especially have been issue for for students and people working in laboratories with special equipment because you know they, their home computer don't have, they only have mouse and keyboard, but they they require the full setup that they can access in certain places. So this is a problem that will probably go away by itself when all these home VR setups become available. Another severe issue in VR development is the fact that uh, the development is very iterative. So you write some code on your computer, then you have to get up and take the, the motion controllers and try mm. what you just changed. And then you have to go back to the computer and you know you, you have to go back and forth and it's it's very very iterative and it's difficult to test your application without trying yourself. There aren't really automated processing for testing the VR user interface, for example, at least not yet. So uh, could there be a, a method that you could try them and at the same time alter the code? <sighs> yeah, prob I can imagine that. Um, <laughs> 
but it's, it's, it's a really hard. I, I think automated testing is one one possibly possibility. There, there are like uh, then Unity and Unreal, these game engine developers, they are working on editing in virtual reality, but that is mostly about asset placement, placing 3D assets and so forth. It's right now it's a bit difficult to imagine that actually coding while mm. wearing the headset. It, it, but it's possible like with with an augmented reality setup. Hmm. Okay, and what about what are the most common prejudices in this field? What does people always assume? I actually um, I don't met that many prejudices or okay. in this field. I, I mostly I I'm in the Fiverr Finnish Virtual Reality Association, and I mostly deal with hobbyists who already know quite a lot about VR. And then if I'm running my own demo and people who have never tried the VR, they come there and they try it. And mostly they're, they're, they're just like, there's this wow factor, like, wow, this is great. <laughs> so, and, and they, they don't have, because they don't know what to expect. So mm. they don't have like much, oh, I expect that it's like this. So mm. I don't really meet that much prejudice. Okay, so it's positive comments all the time. Yeah, yeah, mostly positive comments. Of course, there are some people who, who find some negative things but you know it's that's not a problem for me mm, yeah and what about what is uh, your personal goal in your research what do you want to achieve next yeah well as i'm about to graduate uh, i really have to think about that but um <laughs> what do i want to achieve well i want to polish my uh, virtual reality toolkit and make it more um, have more features and make it people really can use it to experiment different kind of stuff. Um, and I, I want to work with VR myself in the future, so mm. I haven't really thought about it. So that's my <laughs> answer for now. Okay. Uh, do you have uh, some dream that you would like to, if yourself, like feel in augmented reality. Oh, oh, my own personal yeah. VR dream. <laughs> um, I really like bodily interaction, like interacting with avatars and and having your own body in virtual reality, and having like either other people or like completely uh, artificial characters controlled by AI. So that's what I'm interested in, and and. Um, hope you know you, you could do so many you could shake hands with someone you could dance mm. with someone you could alter your own avatar you could you know you could be a bodybuilder or you could be a, you could have any kind you could be of different gender or different race or whatever so for me those are really like interesting opportunities and something that i look forward to Hmm. Could there be like, I was wondering when you were talking about bodybuilding, mm. but then the real life would be different from your virtual body. Mm -hmm. uh, is it co like concerning you or is it a good thing or uh, how do you see it? Um, well, that's, that's, that's a research question that some people are working on. Like, what if your virtual avatar is somehow different than you are different yeah. race and and they have been examining how does it affect your behavior and okay. there are some some results like let's say like um, there's one one study I remember like where you are your virtual avatar you're a superman and you fly to this scene to help some people mm. and and the kind of control setting was that you are just a normal person and they fly you with a helicopter to the scene and they found out that when you were actually this active superman you would become more helpful in, in a later study setting okay so it, it really there are some like initial results that having a different kind of avatar does actually somehow reflect to your behavior okay so yeah, I mean, it can be a positive thing, it can be a threat, like depending on how mm. you apply the technology. Yeah, and in your seminar, Staying Ahead of the Curve in Virtual Reality, you were talking about these light tracking things uh, that would track your hands movement and these V remote controls that are now used mostly. Mm. Uh, how does di this work and what is the uh, biggest difference in these two? Why why would you use more V controls than those that track your hand movements? 
Well, yeah, the, the motion controllers that are widely used, like the, the Valve Lighthouse, uh, I mean, the HTC Vive controllers, PS Move and so forth, mm. you know, those kind of like um, almost remote controls that you use. And the other thing that you mentioned was the, the kind of finger and hand tracking, mm. where uh, it's optical tracking, you don't necessarily have to wear anything. So there are different use cases for that. I mean, the good sides of having a controller is that uh, you can trigger actions reliably. Like there's mm. a button, you feel when you press the button. But if you're doing a gesture like like gesture like this, it mm. doesn't necessarily give you that kind of haptic feedback. You're not sure as sure as with buttons, like when you actually press the button. Mm. So um, and also those controllers, they can give you like rumble, this kind of vibration sense and other kind of tactile feedback mm -hmm. so uh, I don't think motion controllers are going anywhere but they will be used in different situations I can imagine uh, doctors for example use like fully because if they're if you're a surgeon you cannot you really touch any controllers because mm -hmm. that would contaminate your hands you cannot put your, your dirty hands in, in someone's others body yeah so you in that case you would use some kind of augmented reality interface where you could just control with your fingers without having to touch anything okay and that's actually interesting about using vr in education and different mm. kind of uh, fields so you were talking about uh, vr in cinema journalism social media education commerce i think I found this really interesting that you already have thought so many different kind of. So, can you give some ex um, examples, like how could we use VR in the so many different levels? Um, yeah, well, let's give you like the journalism example. There is uh, already like one uh, one researcher has been uh, for a long time has been developing the concept immersive journalism. And well, basically, it means that instead of watching news from this little box TV in the mm. corner of our room, what if we are inside the news? Like, yeah. <laughs> we're, if, what if we are inside the war zone in Syria or somewhere? That really might change our thinking and how we feel. Like, okay, we're actually here in this disaster zone, and we see it. Um, obviously, for some people, that's too much, but. Yeah. This really opens a door for, for like documentaries and journalism. And that's just one example. And, and of course, there's the social, social media, um, like telepresence, like being mm -hmm. present, like we are not right now, but like remotely, not just like a chat window or, or uh, this kind of video chat window, but mm -hmm. actually having a presence of other person who is on the other side of the world. So th there are like many uh, medias that eventually will be disrupted by VR and augmented reality mm -hmm. technology. I'm not saying that it will happen anytime soon and I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but eventually. And actually that was interesting uh, mentioning that you could be uh, on, in the war zone. Mm. Uh, is there a threat that it's coming too real? Like if you would be all, all in real uh, war zone, could you get like traumatized and... Absolutely. I mean, already if you watch movies or, or even like uh, video clips from real horrible events, like, mm. like you, you can see really terrible stuff like in live league or something where they put those like war and other videos and mm. it, it's really disturbing so if you get that stuff and as an immersive version then yeah uh, but the option is just you don't have to watch it don't turn the tv off <laughs> if something terrible is coming yeah. so uh, obviously there's you know it, the news media are going to control like uh, they don't put too terrible stuff so mm. it's going to be in some doses that they think that people can handle. Okay, but there uh, will be like responsibility for the user that. Oh yeah, yeah. Just don't, <laughs> don't go to bad websites <laughs> where you see too much that that you don't want to see. Yeah, that's true. And then uh, when you were talking about communication in virtual reality, what about uh, real life communication? Is it going to uh, go down if virtual? No, 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 I mean, real communication is not going to go anywhere. Uh, I mean, what we are missing is the sense of touch uh, mm. in virtual reality. And I mean, there's some very, 
uh, crude ways that you can wear gloves that give you some mm. vibrations, but that's nothing compared to real touch and that kind of haptic technology is so far away that I don't see a realistic threat for real presence mm. somehow going somewhere. But obviously, if, if you are very introvert and you trend, tend to avoid uh, like real people, actually this kind of telepresence might open a door for you. Especially, you can modify your avatar to something else. If you don't, if you're not happy with yourself or somehow you're shamed, uh, and it's easier for you to use some kind of artificial avatar, then it's maybe easier for you to have some more convincing contact with people in mm. virtual reality. Yeah, so it would uh, actually help for those who are a little bit shyer and you can also find friends from games so you can now do it yeah I, virtual I, reality. I I really hope so but of course there's the problem of, of like uh, online bullying cyber bullying mm. and people that tend to be jerks online yeah. so <laughs> hopefully there will be communities where like people are also nice to each other mm. And uh, yeah, you were talking about the sense of touch that, and that's one of the reasons why uh, real life communication is not going anywhere. Is it, is it uh, really impossible to get it to VR? No, it, it's touch? not possible, but it's gonna take a long time. So, and what technology will do it? I mean, we will see. Um, <clears throat> So really proper like sense of touch or haptic feedback, force feedback, you need this kind of exoskeleton that kind of pushes you back when you try to control and, and mm. especially on your fingertips, there this kind of, um, you, the nerves are so densely that you can, uh, you, it's really difficult to create uh, those kind of feedback units that yeah. are able to replicate the resolution that you have in your fingertips or your lips. So I don't really know what the solution, if it's going to be these full suits that we wear, like kind of like a rubber suit like or, or swimmer, scuba driver's suit. That, <laughs> but that that's like more than 10 years from now. Other option is to have some kind of matrix-like interface where you just put the plug in back of your head and <laughs> Everything <laughs> happens kind of inside your head. Yeah. So, but that it's all science fiction for now, and and uh, we have to see m more than ten years. Mm. Meanwhile, there are going to be some very crude haptic feedback devices, but nothing close to the real world. Uh, what is the best haptic uh, device at the moment? <laughs> oh, um, solution. I haven't really follow the market there's there's different kind of things most common i guess are the vibro tactile feedback so you have a glove and uh there's many of these different like vibrating motors and they can vibrate at, at different like phases and they can give you a sense of touching touching things then there are these like um force feedback solutions where you're kind of holding a pen Okay. And, and you're kind of drawing in 3D and it pushes back when you're touching the virtual object. Those are the kind of cheaper solutions that, that, that you get. But um, yeah, I, it, it's mostly novelty value right now. I, I'm, mm. I don't know. I, I think we have to still wait for the real consumer solution for haptic people. Maybe it's the virtual graphs. I don't know. But I'm... Yeah, I'm very skeptical about this in the near future. And you were talking about consumer VR. Mm. Uh, what kind of everyday effects could you see that VR could have in everyday life? Yeah, um, well, like I said, like eventually it, it's it's this kind of communication, telepresence. Mm. Uh, it could be entertainment, games, movies, uh, commerce. For example, you could see your car or be inside your car at your home. Or uh, you could see remotely apartment that you want to buy. So there's all kind of these commerce options. And uh, yeah, communication, social media, journalism. So with all, that is still future. For now, what we have is, is these 360 movies and games. Okay. So I think games are for in the near future going to be the biggest, biggest term. 
And uh, you were talking about that Oculus Rift's kind of product uh, is not yet in, uh, invented, but what would the next big Oculus Rift need? What would the ne uh, next big, like... Well, uh, yeah, I, I, I guess I was mentioning that there are many, like, small hardware, like, startups that are trying to replicate the mm. Oculus Rift success. So uh, you're asking for the next next big thing in VR? Or uh, yeah, what what could be the next big invention? If you don't uh, if you don't think what uh, is it possible to do technically, but what would you, yeah. what it would be? Well, I mean, absolutely the haptic technology. Okay. There, there, there's that area is lacking, so I I don't know how and when, but that that that's the one one place that still needs like revolution the haptics uh, more soon than that we are gonna by the end of the year we are gonna see the magic leap augmented reality device I'm I'm really looking forward to that they are using they have a light field display and and uh, they seem to be using some very interesting technology so I'm looking forward to that so you haven't tried it yet very few people have <laughs> tried it and all of those people have uh, written NDAs so no I haven't tried it yet but I think we'll be able to try it by the end of the year. Okay. And uh, what about you are researching in Finland, uh, VR and R. Mm. Uh, what about how far is Finland in this research compared to other countries? Well, it's pretty small. It's pretty small. In my university, I was pretty much only working on the interaction side. Okay. There were other people working on stereographics and, and other like virtual acoustics and stuff like that. Uh, I know that in Finland, other universities, there is some similar stuff, but it's, I think it's, it's very small scale. So obviously, in those big American universities, they, where they have lots of resources, they are far ahead. And they have okay. bigger research terms like focusing on VR. But I think, um, yeah, I, right, because of the hype right now with VR, I think in Finnish universities also, the VR research is going to come bigger eventually. Okay. Hey, thank you for being here with us on Fireside Chat. It has been a pleasure. Sure, thank you. And for the viewers, remember to go check uh, takala.org and also ruisystem.net. Thank you for watching Fireside Chat.